Perhaps you've heard of the conspiracy theory that aliens secretly live among us or have visited our home planet. You may have even watched a few YouTube videos showing evidence of extraterrestrial life. Would you believe it if you heard that we have been witnessing UFOs for centuries? What if you saw a UFO? If so, would you be able to prove that it was real? Do you think anyone would even believe you? These are just some of the questions that can arise from a UFO sighting. But what happens when those questions become reality? That's exactly what happened in Hampton, Virginia. Hampton, Virginia is home to a thriving art scene. Unique festivals, annual events, and cultural landmarks like the Hampton Coliseum, Harbor Tours, Cruises, and the Virginia Air and Space Center. It's also a city that's covered with a long, strange history of UFO sightings. What is a UFO? But wait, before we get to the juicy bits, what does the word UFO stand for? Well, a UFO is short for an unidentified flying object, and it's a term used to describe any object that's not immediately identifiable as something else. In pop culture, however, UFOs are heavily tied to the kinds that you see in the clouds and think, that is definitely not a plane. The type that you get a glimpse of in the sky and can make you say, oh my god, I just saw an alien spacecraft. The United States Air Force first used the word UFO in 1953 to refer to any reports of such objects. Following the rise of rocket technology after World War II, UFOs became a popular topic of discussion. In fact, in 1947, the first ever confirmed UFO sighting was recorded. Businessman Kenneth Arnold allegedly saw nine extremely fast objects while flying his plane close to Mount Rainier in Washington. Arnold estimated the speed of the crescent-shaped objects to be several thousand miles per hour and said they moved like saucers skipping on water. It was incorrectly stated in the following newspaper article that the UFOs were saucer-shaped. Hence, the term flying saucer is born. The Hampton Incident When it comes to UFO sightings, you might think that the only people who believe in them are those with a particular interest in the subject or those who have seen one themselves. However, as it turns out, even people who work for NASA have been known to report seeing UFOs. When a NASA employee, a disciple of logic and science, reports a UFO sighting, he'll surely be bound to pay attention and listen to the story. On January 27, 1965, Downtown by Petula Clark topped the Music USA radio charts, and daily life continued as usual in most households. But for David Crimmins, an 11-year-old boy and his father, the drive home was certainly one of the most memorable journeys they had made in their lives. At 6 p.m. that same day, while driving home, a strange object with blinking red and orange lights on its outer edges captured the attention of the two Crimmins. Immediately, David's father stopped the car and ordered his son to get the binoculars to further observe these lights blinking in a sequence. What was bizarre about these lights was that they seemed to come from a rotating disc and they appeared to land. However, David's father was no ordinary witness. Arthur Crimmins Jr. was a former NASA engineer. Thus, he would basically know the exotic equipment that NASA was using or creating, and the strange object they saw definitely did not add up on his list. Therefore, Crimmins filed a report about this UFO sighting with NECAP. NECAP, or National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, was a UFO research organization that was primarily active in the United States between the 1950s and the 1980s. As Crimmins Jr. stated in the report, it was zigzagging as if searching for a landing spot. I watched it through 20 by 50 binoculars and I could see the flashing lights. They appeared to be on the edge or rim of a rapidly rotating disc. After a brief touch landing, the flying disc took off and climbed rapidly out of sight. Another Witness Crimmins and his son weren't the only ones to observe this peculiar incident. In addition, believe it or not, another NASA employee saw this UFO sighting. The other witness was Major John Nyadli, a retired Air Force jet pilot who then became a NASA research engineer. He claimed that he sighted a fast-moving object. Due to its speed, he initially believed it to be a regular meteor or shooting star. But as it got closer and persisted, it wasn't what he thought it would be. He saw that it was a V-shaped object with blinking red-orange lights on the outer edges, zigzagging at a low level. It was similar to what David Crimmins and his father saw. However, it differed in its shape. The Theory Now the question is, what did the two NASA employees see? The U.S. Air Force began its investigation into the Hampton incident before the two NASA employee witnesses had submitted their reports to the NECAP. 
The Air Force had formulated and brushed off the unidentified flying object that was seen being the SH-3 Sea King helicopter. The SH-3 Sea King helicopter was an anti-submarine warfare helicopter, and when flying at night, the blades of this helicopter give off some electric discharge. It then creates colors like a laser going back and forth repeatedly, matching the description of the sequence lights from the UFO sighting. Yet again, one major thing doesn't add up, and there's a flaw in this theory. It is well known that, even up to this here with modern-day technology, whenever we see a flying helicopter, it's always accompanied by that loud zooming and twirling sound. If it's true that UFO sighting they saw on that Wednesday night of January 27, 1965 was the SH-3 seeking helicopter, how come, based on Kremen's report, that what he saw was a silent aircraft? It doesn't surely fit with what Nyadli and Kremen saw. NECAP also did its own investigations. Now, this is the part where it gets intriguing. Possibly one of the clues to this fascinating puzzle has been there all along. The location of the UFO sighting may offer an answer. Based on NECAP's findings, Langley Air Force Base is close to where these two witnesses claim to have seen the strange phenomenon. Could it be that what Nyadli and Kremen saw was a top-secret government military project? Project 1794 Project 1794 Sounds cool and mysterious, right? It's the stuff of science fiction, but it was real. Antonio Paris, an astronomer, revealed. Air Force at that time was building what we called Project 1794. What's intriguing about Project 1794 is that it was a military project from the mid-1960s that was intended to create a supersonic flying saucer. The recently declassified records released last October 2012 reveal a now obsolete Canadian company was hired by the U.S. Air Force to develop an aircraft that humans have never seen before. Project 1794 made it as far as the earliest stages of product design and prototype structure. The presumed flying saucer was supposed to reach a top speed of between Mach 3 and Mach 4, a ceiling of over 100,000 feet, and a maximum range with allowances of about 1,000 nautical miles based on the document. If we compare it now to the series of advanced aircraft we have in this modern age, it would always be like the supersonic Arian AS-3 airliner. This commercial airliner has a max speed of 4 plus and could fly you from Los Angeles to Tokyo in a span of just 3 hours. The saucer would have been able to spin through the Earth's stratosphere at a top average speed of roughly 2,600 miles per hour if the designs had been carried through to the end. Additionally, it was intended to perform vertical takeoff and landings or VTOL, controlling and stabilizing the aircraft with propulsion jets. Now, this theory seems promising, isn't it? The two NASA employees reported sighting of a UFO was likely a secret government operation. Nevertheless, research from a similar U.S. military flying saucer program indicates that such an aircraft would have been challenging to create. Plum Tree Island Decades had passed, yet the 1965 UFO sighting Hampton incident was still a cold case. In 2012, NECAP investigators found records that could lead to a new clue. Do you recall the scene where David Crimmins and his father stopped their car to watch the UFO? It turns out that the driveway they pulled into faces directly over this area known as Plumtree Island. David recalled. Now, Plumtree Island was this very dark, scary place. It was government property. It used to be a bombing range, we were told. Records also revealed Plumtree Island was also the location of a highly classified NASA spacecraft testing facility amid the iconic space race during the 60s. This means helicopters were zooming to the place carrying aircrafts to do some drop tests, water landings, parachute tests, and other similar experiments. Some of these experiments were hidden from the public and were classified as government top secret. On the other side, clearly a NASA employee would know the difference between just another experiment drop test from a UFO sighting, right? Nick Pope, a defense analyst, even stated. Surely NASA engineers would have seen a drop test before and wouldn't mistake the capsule for something truly unknown. Another UFO sighting. Furthermore, 1965 wasn't just the year Hampton, Virginia saw a UFO. In fact, on July 14th of the year 1952, William Nash and William Fortenberry, two flight officers traveling from New York to Miami, reportedly saw six disks, each 100 feet across glowing like red-hot charcoal. They were joined by two more before flashing their lights to the west of the airplane over the peninsula, 
before commencing a high ascent and disappearing. There is no doubt in our minds that we saw missiles of some kind operating under intelligent control, Nash told the Associated Press. The rest of the passengers on the flight were unaware, but civilians on the ground did. Days later, three Norfolk locals provided the daily press with confirmation of the reports. Officials from Langley Air Force informed the newspaper that the pilots observed rockets or tracers being launched at the Plumtree Island, bombing a target range. Back to the notorious 1965 Hampton UFO mystery case, five decades had passed, yet for the now grown up David Crimmins, that UFO sighting still remains a mystery. It's no secret that the world is a mysterious place and the truth is out there. We don't know what's going on with UFOs, but we do know that they're not a new phenomenon. They've been around for centuries and they still haven't been explained by scientists or governments. We'll never know if it was an alien spacecraft or a military experiment that went wrong. No matter what happened, however, it's clear that the world has lots of mysteries and we should keep all looking up. We can keep learning and keep exploring. How about you? What's your take on this matter? Do you think the Hampton incident was an alien spacecraft or a military government top secret experiment? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments section.